Welcome back. Going back to our top story where the Kenya Defense Force say they have bombed Al-Shabaab camps inside Somalia five days after an attack at a Kenyan university left 147 people dead. And for more on that, we're now joined on the line by our correspondent, Sarah Kimani. Sarah, can you provide us with an update on the raids in neighboring Somalia by the Kenyan Air Force? Well, what we know now is that uh, after the attack, the Kenyan Defense Forces uh, used their Air Force uh, uh, wing, and we understand that they bombed uh, several areas inside Somalia, several villages uh, on, the, on, on an area called Gedo. That, that is the main region. And uh, we understand that uh, the area has about 800 people, but they say most of those people who live there are linked uh, to the militants. Uh, as yet, they have not given the number of casualties. But this is the first major attack since uh, uh, by the Kenya Defense Forces against the Al-Shabaab militants inside Somalia since the Garita attack has been. Sarah, what is the feeling like on the ground and how are relations amongst Muslim and Christian communities? Well, relations between uh, Muslims and uh, the Christian community in Kenya has not, uh, you know, changed much. But you see, uh, there is a suspicion when we speak to various people, uh, religious leaders uh, today holding a joint press conference saying that uh, the country should remain united and that nobody should allow these attacks and that uh, they uh, you know what happened just before those attacks, you know, where we are told that uh, Christians are separated from Muslims to divide the country. But it is difficult at such points to be able to convince everybody that indeed uh, this is not a, an attack on one religion. And uh, President Kenyatta has had himself uh, having to talk uh, to remind Kenyans that uh, Kenyans have lived together, united uh, for a long time. However, uh, when you speak to Kenyans in general, most of them are angry. They're angry because they feel the Kenyan government took too long uh, to end the siege at the Garissa University as a skill that there are no lessons that have been learned uh, since the Kenya Defense Forces moved into Somalia and expected uh, a backlash from the militants. Do you have an update for us on the hunt for the alleged masterminds of the Gariza attack? Well, uh, what uh, is imagined now is that uh, one of his uh, colleagues um, that he plans to travel with to Somalia is actually uh, believed to be fighting alongside uh, to be fighting alongside the uh, ISIS rebels. Uh, it is not clear uh, when he left the country, but it, it goes to show the extent to which uh, young people in Kenya have been radicalized. Uh, how young people are being taken advantage of by their extremists. But also shows that it is not only, you know, like the feeling on the ground has been children from marginalized communities, it's children who uh, have no education. The case of Abdullahi uh, Abdirahman shows that indeed even children who have uh, had the best in life, the pictures doing rounds on social media show as a man in suits, a man, uh, you know, hanging out in very big areas where not your ordinary Kenyan would be able to go. So it shows that the radicalization and extremism is cutting across the Kenyan society and it's not discriminating. Sarah, what are the people on the ground saying about Kenya's continued involvement in Somalia? Um, opinion is divided. Uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga is among those people who are now asking that the troops should be moved back to Kenya, saying that uh, a lot of lives have been lost. Uh, however, when the criticism has come that he was in charge, uh, who was among those in charge of government then, when it happened, he says that uh, there has, should have been an exit plan, a proper exit plan, which is now lacking. Uh, the Kenyan government insists that it is in Somalia to stay. Uh, President Kenneth is saying that Kenya is going to fight terrorism to the end, and it will ensure that uh, Somalia has a stable government, because until Somalia has a stable government, then the regional uh, neighbors will always be in problems. Now, the Dabab refugee camp, home of to thousands of Somali refugees, designed to house just around 100,000 refugees and now home to a slightly above a quarter of a million, is a hot potato in Kenya, where some civilians are calling for it to be dismantled. They say it is breeding ground for anti-Kenyan sentiments. What are people now saying? Well, um, it, it, it's also very divided because initially the government was sure that... Uh, of, of him sure in its answer and saying that uh, uh, they believe that uh, some of the 
refugees who are hiding in the, the dead refugee camp and uh, some of the uh, uh, militants who are hiding in the, the dead refugee camp. But it is, it is, it is not imagined. I'd like to take, for example, when President Tinesha spoke on uh, Saturday during the national address, he said that uh, he is worried that some of these young people, uh, these people who uh, come to attack Kenyans are actually living within Kenya and within the Kenyan Muslim community. So almost probably for him are uh, trying to shield the blame away from uh, the, the Somali refugees. However, there are plans to repatriate uh, Somali refugees uh, back to Somalia into areas that are seen as safe and in areas that have been liberated uh, by the African Union forces and it's from that have been fighting in Somalia. Now, Sarah, I mentioned earlier that um, the Kenyan military has already bombed two Al-Shabaab camps. Now, can you take us through some of the security measures that the Kenyan government is embarking on to ensure that such attacks don't happen again? Uh, security has been heightened across the country. Um, universities are now uh, going ahead to use the uh, armed um, police officers to man their, uh, to ban their campuses. Uh, one of the Christian universities we had this morning uh, may uh, consider uh, hiring uh, the military to man uh, its, its gates and to man uh, activities inside the school. What, what it does is that when an attack like this happens, security is heightened immediately. You can almost feel it. But as the situation uh, returns to normal Kenyans mourn and they heal, they, they seem to forget and will find that the troops uh, or the security officers or the police officers are pulled away. And that is why uh, when uh, uh, Minister for Internal Security, just as Kaiseri was speaking, on the first day of the attack, he said that indeed the Kenyan troops and the Kenyan government was caught in a way. Now, Sarah, we understand that people in Kenya have been donating blood uh, to help some of the victims who are still in hospital. Do you have any idea how some of them are doing? And can we expect the death toll to maybe rise for some of them who are terribly injured? Um, we know that there are about 80 casualties from that attack, and uh, the St. John's Ambulance and the Kenya Red Cross Society says for the moment they need about 10,000 10, units of blood. Uh, people really came out initially in the morning, it seemed like uh, people were not going to come, or probably fearing to be in large groups or in crowds. But by mid-afternoon, uh, the crowds were big and people came out, and when you spoke to them, some of them thought just the making blood uh, for young Kenyan university students now in hospital and nothing uh, serious injuries was a, was a show of patriotism. Others were very old parents saying it could have been my son, it could have been my daughter. It is time to stand uh, shoulder to shoulder with the parents who have their children in hospital. Now, Sarah, just lastly, you mentioned that President Kenyatta has been in the country and, and promoting uh, unity, you know, for the Kenyans. Now, can we expect other African countries to come on board in terms of helping Kenya through this crisis? There's been an um, outpouring of, you know, messages of goodwill from, uh, and, and condolences from across the East African region, from Nigeria, South Africa, Nigeria, further even to the UN Security Council, they're all speaking with one voice. Uh, earlier, if you remember, early last year, there was a conference on terrorism. Uh, the African Union saying that uh, uh, African governments need to work together to fight what they call the transnational crime, saying that uh, terrorism was no country and there's no borders. Sarah, thank you very much for the update. We'll have to leave it there.